there, Dan. And we'll I'm good. I'll start talking. I'm good. I got I'm gonna turn my phone off and I'm good to go. Yeah, yeah. G A. To to cut. <laughs> These are nuclear powered battery controlled <laughs> finger picks. Welcome back to The Hangar. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel and today we have very special guest Dan Greider who as you may have seen is making the rounds along the YouTube aviation networks here if you will regarding his his training program that he wants to see bring some part 121 airline style training concepts into general aviation and reduce the accident rate within general aviation. So you may have seen Dan most recently on uh, Steve's Flight Chops video. He was made famous there with the DC-3 flight, right? That's when you first ran into yeah, Steve? Yeah, 2017, yeah. And then most recently you uh, visited Aviation 101's channel? Yeah, we just got back from uh, South Texas and uh, shooting three days with Aviation 101. Good time. And what is it here at the Blanco Lirio channel? Why did you come reach out to the viewers of the Blanco Lirio channel? Juan, you're, you're an influencer, you're a social media influencer, but you're an airline guy. And I've watched your stuff. Your stuff is good and people are following you and you've, and you've got the goods. You've got a legitimate YouTube channel. Um, I've got a message that I want to get out. I've also got about 16 other topics if we have time. Yeah, let's make a series. We'll make, we'll make a mm -hmm. series on this and step through it. You're one of those guys that I can talk to because you and I speak the same language. Mm -hmm. So on all this stuff, and you're one of those guys, kind of like me, not afraid to call a spade a spade, <laughs> right? That's important. That's important. And it's hard to find in aviation, especially at the upper ends of aviation, because we're also yeah concerned about our jobs or stepping on somebody's toes. But yeah, you still got to do it. As a good co-pilot, that's your job is to make the call. Make the call. Say what it is. Uh, let them debate it later. But uh, we need to call a spade a spade. And I've got a total list of 14 topics that I'd like to talk to you about because you're one of those guys. I can talk to you about this stuff. Excellent. So let's start right away with, uh, I was thinking we'd start with the, you, the latest accident aviation statistics here in general aviation. What's been going on the last couple of months here? Well, I'll get beat bad for this, but I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm an amateur NTSB investigator. My point is the NTSB takes way too long to publish anything. Their stuff is inaccurate. It takes two years to get some kind of a maybe marginal probable cause. It's taken us too long. I've got data that I crunch month by month. So the data that I'm going to show you here is off of 2020 data. New this year. Since January 1, I've got a page for January and a page for February. So every fatal crash that's happened in the United States since January, I've got it. I've got the end number, where they were, and I've also attributed it into my best guess as to what bucket it falls into. Now, is your criticism of NTSB specifically, or is it a general criticism, or is it specifically in general aviation? It, my criticism of NTSB has to do with their handling of general aviation. They, te they treat the two animals totally separately. General aviation is the poor stepchild that doesn't get any attention. And you know, here's, here's the words right from NTSB, straight from their horse's mouth. They want to produce recommendations. That's the job of the NTSB is to produce recommendations that are both timely and well-considered recommendations to enhance safety. Well, number one, they're not timely. Number two, a recommendation from NTSB specifically for a GA crash has not occurred since 2011. Not one. Mm, wow. wow. They quit producing recommendations for general aviation in 2011. Ten years have gone by and we have not one recommendation, whereas airline and the, and the big dogs get hundreds of them. But to be fair, that's because they're the they're taking the uh the unwashed masses, the the paying passenger, and and for that you expect a certain level of, of safety, and GA is kind of left on your own. We're in a world where we are cleared to learn but not to kill. Right, right. Well, they're, I think their stance is that they've thrown their hands up and they say, the guy ran out of gas and he was completely stupid. We don't know what kind of a recommendation to make for that. 
<laughs> okay, well. And there's some validity to that. Mm -hmm. However, there are a tremendous amount of recommendations that could be being made. There's more public material that is available. There's, there's things that we could be doing to stop this currently escalating rate that we have. And 2018 is over, we got the data for that. 2019 is over, we've already crunched the data for 2019. We didn't do good in 2019 either in general aviation. I wanna take this thing that's going up and let's bend it back down. NTSB is not helping us and that is a complaint. Well, that's where we are our brother's own best keeper here in general aviation. We need guys like Dan to get out here on influencer channels and tell us what you're what what have you found out what's going so let's look at these accidents here well starting in january uh i just told them up and these happen uh and here here's the path that i do faa has a website called asias faa so anytime an accident happens uh the very next business day that accident that fatal accident or that incident will get listed on the website it'll give you the date time and the end number and how many people died I take that data and I go immediately to several other sources like Catherine's report or mm -hmm. whatever, wherever I can start piecing together within the first couple of days of an accident and figure out my best guess what really happened. Then I'll go to Flight Aware or Flight Tracker and I'll try to find where they went. It's purely a best guess on my part as to what I think happened. but. We're not manufacturing any new ways of killing ourselves. It's always the same old story, right? That's why I was almost reluctant to get into aviation on this program because I'd just be telling the same story over and over, but it's not just enough to, there's so much to learn. There's so much to learn and uh, uh, it's the same thing. Houdini died of a sucker punch. You know? And I always say, you can sucker punch me once, but you're not gonna sucker punch me twice. Mm -hmm. uh, sucker punch me once, shame on you. Sucker punch me twice, shame on me. We're getting sucker punched on these things. It's the same type accident. Would you believe since January 1, on this piece of paper, there's been seven fatal crashes in America. Day VFR, airplanes fall out of the sky in the traffic pattern. Simply flew too slow. Stall spin, the Stall. classic, since since aviation was born. And that was, what's this uh, date, or, date range? January 1, 2020, concluding last day of february february 29 two months seven fatal 60 60 days of data uh we've got uh 28 fatal crashes seven of those were day of efr falling out of the sky hmm. Hmm. isn't hmm. that crazy man that's yeah yeah and we're going to get into some of dan's possible solutions here now what else do you got on, on the last two months well i dropped them into buckets okay and my summary is I put a little tick mark. Here's here's my 18 buckets, my possible ways of dying in an airplane. There's 18 buckets, so every time an accident happens, I drop them into a bucket. Here's what I think they did. Now, of those buckets, there's only four that are pretty common. Seven of those we just talked about uh, were day VFR traffic pattern fell out of the sky. They got too slow base to final. They got too slow on crosswind. They lost control. They did not fly their airplane fast enough for the existing lift condition that they had. Number two was loss of thrust on takeoff. We had five fatal accidents where they lost the engine on takeoff and they died because they never lowered the nose in time. We've all talked about the impossible turn. Can you turn around? Turning around is, is irrelevant to the equation. I want you to save your life first. If you never lower the nose and unload the wing, you don't even have the option of turning around. We lost five airplanes and a whole bunch of people in the first 60 days of 2020. So there's seven for there, five for there. We lost three accidents with spatial disorientation. Mm -hmm. The Kobe Bryant crash was mm -hmm. one of them that got national attention for the first time. What is spatial disorientation? Right. Well, we're gonna be following that a lot on this channel as well. So we, we, found, we found that out. So we had three fatal crashes, guys flying in the clouds and got disoriented, didn't know which way was up. Uh, we also lost uh, three airplanes, uh, simple terrain, collision flew right into the ground or flew into a tower or flew into something they hit an object in flight that they didn't know was there commonly called c fit or controlled flight in the terrain exactly so uh and then we lost uh two airplanes uh three airplanes uh faulty rejected takeoffs mm. now you're an airline guy how many times have you ever done a rejected takeoff a real one no, in the sim. In the sim, plenty of times. In reality, zero, but in the sim, plenty of times. Every time you're in the sim, you have to do a rejected takeoff. Yeah, and that's because an RTO is on your AQP check ride. Mm -hmm. It's not optional. You're going to get an RTO. Yep. In general aviation, where's our RTO for single engine? For a guy who goes out and gets his private pilot check ride, check ride where, where's the RTO in that material? Yeah. yeah. It ain't there. Mm-hmm. 
consequently, people don't have that same training that you have. The decision, how far am I going to go? Uh, the guy in uh, Colorado ran his Cherokee off a 5,000 foot runway. It never did fly. Went all the way. He had a 5,000 foot runway. Now, granted, he was heavy and high, but the airplane did not develop sufficient lift. Never made it off the airport mm. property mm. before he killed people. Mm. Never aborted. Yep, yep. When do you reject? Mm -hmm. He didn't have any training. He couldn't have had any training from the FAA because the FAA doesn't give us any training. No guides, no checking. My question is, why? Why that training is not there? Why are we sticking to an old syllabus that's been around since the beginning yeah. of time? Yeah, yeah, why? Why? So that's what I've done here. That's that's the whole AQP program. It started with... Uh, now let's back up and say AQP. What does AQP stand for? It's Advanced Qualification Program. It's something that the airlines went to the FAA and solicited because they wanted to be able to train beyond ATP PTS at that time. They wanted to be able to make up their own maneuvers that were not in the PTS. They wanted to get rid of the maneuvers not pertinent to their operation and add the ones that were pertinent to their operation. So they custom built their own check ride and that's what AQP allows them to do. And they got that data from real world data to, to customize this training program. Now when you're in the airline industry you take a check ride every nine months or so. There's usually two events nowadays. There's one event called the loft line oriented flight training. And that's where you just simply go up in the simulator. And this is the jeopardy event. This is the event that you get your check ride in. And a loft is basically a profile. You fly from point A to point B. You do the flight all the way through. And there's some minor distraction like low oil pressure or a generator in up light. And you're being graded on how you work together as a crew. But you don't get into any of these maneuvers. So there's a whole separate event called your maneuvers val or the AQP, as Dan says, where you go through these maneuvers that the airlines have deemed important enough to study using actual aviation accident data. And though that's not a Jeopardy event, that's trained to proficiency event, you're always being graded when you're in the simulator. And so now you're bringing this concept to the general aviation masses. I'm proposing that we just steal it. Uh, mm -hmm. AQP is a whole lot more than what we've touched on here. It has to do with data collection and, and all the other things. But uh, they've basically connived their own check ride at the uh, authority of the FAA to build their own check ride based on building the maneuvers valve that you talked about. Those are still maneuvers. You're going to get a wind shear on takeoff. Mm -hmm. That's that's part of your maneuver, mm -hmm. uh, but that's not in the ATP PTS for the airplane that you're right. typing on. That's because they made that up and they put it in there and you're graded on it and mm -hmm. that's in there. So I'm just stealing the concept. Let's custom build our maneuvers, not necessarily for getting a license. Right. This wouldn't be you wouldn't be great. You wouldn't be eliminated for this or busted for this. This is what you're proposing for like in lieu of the let's go get a hamburger style BFR biannual flight review training. Yeah. And that's what's really weak in the whole general aviation thing. There is no recurrent training like you and I are used to where uh, you bet your ticket is online here. Uh, let's study for this thing. Let's do really well on this. A biannual flight, flight review is what they used to call it. You can go get a cheeseburger with your buddy once every two years and you're totally legal. And that's complete hogwash. I mean, are you kidding me? And we, that's, need, we need continuing education. Yes, and that's one of the big differences between a recreational pilot and a professional pilot. As a professional pilot, you're constantly, always training. Yeah. And you got to bring some of that back into general aviation so that you're just not doing the same thing for years and years in your general aviation flying. Yeah. So this whole thing started with flight chops. It's a YouTube thing. Mm -hmm. uh, two years ago right now, I was totally unfamiliar with what even social media was. <laughs> I had never heard of it. It'll steal stuff. your soul. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not into that stuff. I don't have a channel and I don't own a camera and I don't want to do any of that stuff. But you're smart to just reach out to other guys that do and spread the word. Guess who's going to do the editing off of this video? <laughs> That's right. I'll be in the floor for hours. You. <laughs> Guess where I'll be. Cutting out all the cuss words. Gone. I'll be gone. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. But no, you've got the followers. You got the you got the stuff there. And then uh, we just finished in, in San Marcos, Texas, with Aviation 101. He's like the number three YouTuber in America right now with really good content. Clean cut guy with great cameras, great equipment, great editing, great audio. And uh, he was all over this. He is a CFI. Mm -hmm. So watch for that content coming out on Aviation 101. That's where I sat in the back seat and instructed the instructor on how to instruct this material 
to get these guys up to speed on what they should be doing, all with the goal of saving their life, all with the goal of taking this accident data and bending it down. Good, That's good, good. Doing. Excellent. And cut. Good. So one of the somewhat controversial things that you've come up with uh, as I've been following you on social media is your concept of min maneuvering speed and actually marking that on your airspeed indicator on general aviation aircraft. Now we all know that an airplane can stall at any airspeed or any attitude. However, general aviation aircraft fly straight and level enough to where you can approximate that very accurately by just using your airspeed indicator. So what's, so tell us all about that. Well, you're an airline guy. I mean, you've flown the heavy equipment like I have. Uh, when have you ever been flying along in an airline or an intentionally busted your, your clean maneuvering speed? You can't do it. You just simply cannot do it. Um, what, what level of honoring do they do your, your crews honor that min maneuvering? You've got it bugged. Zero knot on final, it's zero knots. Minus zero knots, plus 20, but minus zero, for example, yeah. on final. Or how about clean maneuvering before you got anything mm -hmm. even thrown out there? You know what your, what your min clean speed to fly is. What would happen if you came in and you wiped out the power and pulled the nose up and said, I'd like to fly below min clean mm -hmm. speed here? Can't do it. Can't, Can't do, do it. it. And the neat thing is in the airliners, in the glass cockpit, is you've got this window of, of opportunity of flying speed, and then below that window is a yellow zipper and then a red zipper showing you your stall speeds and above you are your flap limit speeds so you're always very aware of what your current airspeed status is and of course we have AOA indicators in that indication as well yeah but your speeds are always bugged for the existing lift condition that mm -hmm. you got hanging out there so you always know either via the white bugs that slide around on the Jurassic dinosaur yep. airplanes or your glass cockpits are always have a zipper a yellow arc blue arc a blue dot white dot whatever depiction it is whatever kind of airplane you're in it's always honoring a 30 percent buffer mm -hmm. yep that's what the designers have built in. If you'll honor that min speed, or if you've got flaps 11 in an MD-88 and you're flying around, your your flaps 11 speed allows you to bank up to 30, uh, well on that airplane, up to 25 degrees angle to bank. At that speed, and you've still got a 30% buffer built into the airframe. Mm -hmm. Somebody's already run the calculations on that. My question is why in GA, why don't we have the same thing so that we can avoid dropping these seven guys out of the sky day VFR? Why don't we have a min maneuvering that would be real simple? It does never change based on max gross weight. It's a worst case condition, just like blue line is on a twin. And we placard blue line because mm -hmm. we need it. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have to remember that number. Fly blue line. You lose an engine on a light twin, fly blue line, right? So you're talking physically taking a piece of tape and marking the, a, a line on your airspeed indicator for your recommended min maneuvering airspeed it's, as a visual reminder. Yeah, it's not a piece of tape. You know, most of the time we take a neon sticky note, hmm. a pair of scissors and slice like a sixteenth sliver, mm -hmm. just real bright and just stick it on the correct speed. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing when you're flying around looking at that thing, it's obvious what your min maneuvering speed is. Now, when you get on final and throw some flaps out there, if you want to go below min maneuvering speed and you're on final and coming down the vast sea and everything's good, sure, you can bust minimum maneuvering speed. Yeah, which, you're, not, you're not in any danger now. The wings unloaded and the nose is coming down and you're looking at the runway straight ahead. So this is specifically for maneuvering. This isn't obviously for determining your landing speeds. This Correct. is just for maneuvering around. And to, to make this, when I buy and sell airplanes all the time, well I used to, uh, the first thing I would always do would get get the airplane up and running good and then go up there and stall it and look at what indicated air speed did this airplane stall at and then make a note of that and then add 30 percent of that and figure okay there's there's my min maneuvering airspeed and then figure my approach speeds from there is that basically the same way that you're going to figure this this uh, where to put the piece of paper on your no i made it even speed? simpler than that the mm -hmm. 30 the 30 percent uh the the number that i've come up with is uh is an eight percent above the 30 percent which uh compensates for a 30 degree angle of bank mm -hmm. so it comes out to by technical math 1.404 times your clean speed. So just look at your airspeed indicator. Whatever bottom of the green is, is your clean max gross stall speed. Just add 40.4% to that and stick a placard on there. Mm -hmm. That's all That's all it is. And you're going to be real close. If you'll honor that speed in the traffic pattern, both after takeoff, you're, you're on takeoff on the upwind leg, turning on the crosswind, and you want to turn it 30 degrees, and you're pulling G's and the nose is up, there's your min speed to climb at. Mm -hmm. It's a min climb speed. It's a min speed in the pattern. Left base to final with no flaps out there. Don't bust minimum maneuvering speed, just like we did at the airlines, mm -hmm. and you're going to be totally good.
And it's got enough buffer built into there to take into the account the angle of attack, the uh, G-loading of the aircraft for typical uh, GA sort of operations. But it's, again, this is not to be confused with your landing speeds or anything. Once you're over the fence, and or even before, once you're on final, you're going to be flying a, an appropriate final approach speed. This is maneuvering. Yeah, so two different things. There's a V-ref. And I would I'd recommend a little G airplane uh, normally 20% mm -hmm. above power off stall speed would be a good V ref and then add a few knots for grandma maybe a few knots for headwind or something like that so uh, if you want to run your calculation you find out that your 172 needs a, a 59 knot V ref I'd throw in six knots for grandma and call it a V ref of 65 have some kind of a target in mind that I want to cross the numbers at this speed so that you're not crossing the numbers at ref plus 30 and still expecting to land and get that thing <laughs> shut down in time you got to get out there and practice slow flying your aircraft spot landing precision make every landing a precision landing make every landing a landing on center line yeah, just be conscious of, of the DMMS speed so you don't fall out of the sky. Be conscious of what your target VREF is. Calculate it however you want to calculate it, but have some kind of a number that makes sense for your airplane and the airport that you're going into. Good. Now let's talk a little bit about engine failure on takeoff. Now you got your min maneuvering speed bugged. How is this, how is this going to help you in that situation? Well, the DMMS bug... Uh, is going to come out three things. DMMS, what's that again? Define minimum maneuvering speed. Mm -hmm. It's three and one. It's, it's your minimum maneuvering speed, it's your best climb speed, and it's also your best glide speed. So if you lose an engine, pitch for DMMS. If you want to make a, a normal single engine... We're talking you lose your only engine too, right? Single your only engine. engine. Yeah. yeah, single engine. You lose yeah. your engine, there's the speed that you want to pitch to. Look in your book. If you'll calculate DMMS and look in your book and see what published best glide is, they're going to be within a couple knots of each other. Mm -hmm. It's a placarded go-to number that covers you for all three situations. It's perfect. Your brain cells are shot. Mine are too. <laughs> you can't remember where you left your car keys. That's correct. How are you supposed to remember this cheesy number in time of crisis mm -hmm. in the heat of battle? How are mm -hmm. you supposed to remember? Just look. It's on your panel. Yeah. It's placarded. Just go to this number and you're good. And if you're doing a high AOA sort of takeoffs, it's going to be a pretty aggressive push to achieve that number. Yes, it is. Yeah. And yeah. that's something that needs to be practiced. Yeah. Get, get light in the seat. And that's a whole other topic. That's one of my other 14 topics. <laughs> controversial topics that I think you and I should talk about. Yes. And how about what about the issue of should I return or should I continue straight ahead on a single engine airplane with an engine failure on takeoff? Uh, tough, tough call. I'm not going to go out on a limb and tell anybody what to do. I would say step one, save your life. Step two, you make the decision on whether you want to turn around or not. I generally probably wouldn't turn around, attempt to turn around unless I knew for sure I had plenty of fudge to do it. Uh, but step one, you don't even have the option of turning around if you never save your life. If you never dump the nose over and you're climbing out at VX or VX minus five and that engine quits, you got to be pretty aggressive. Uh, we just did the video in San Marcos with Aviation 101. In his Skyhawk, we had him climbing at VX, and I chopped the throttle, and he got the stall horn within one second. Hmm. After intentionally telling him not to lower the nose when I chopped the throttle, mm -hmm. he held existing pitch. Uh, we got stall horn. We would have gotten a wing buffet one second later if he hadn't lowered the nose. But save your life. Get light in the seat. Push. Then, then you make your decision. I don't care if you want to turn around, head back to the airport or not. That's your call. Mm. Uh, might work, might not. You're always going to be safe going straight ahead, 30 left, 30 there right, you straight go. ahead. Aim for the cheapest, softest thing that you can, least expensive thing that you can find and put an end. And keep it flying all the way to the bitter end. Keep it flying all the way to the end. That's, that's your best shot of, of doing anything. If you never lower the nose, never save your life, then... Nothing, nothing's possible. And just setting a hard altitude like 500 feet, uh, that's, it's more about airspeed management than it is anything to do with altitude above the ground. It, it's energy management. It's all going to depend on the airplane, the power plant, the day, the, the DA, what kind of so a many variables. you are, oh, how, yeah. how ready you are for mm -hmm. it, how surprised, how many seconds you lost in startle and shock and confusion. I don't know any of those, so I can't go on record and tell, tell a guy what to do, whether to turn back or not. I don't know, and I'm not going to say. Hmm. Excellent. Good. Thanks, Dan.
AQP and min maneuvering airspeed concepts. So stay tuned, we're gonna make a whole series of videos with Dan on all these different topics that he's got. Thank you for your support, hit that subscribe button and thank you for your support on Patreon because a lot of these issues we could never- Subscribe and like and support him on Patreon. He's one of the guys out there in the trenches doing this stuff. I'm not gonna do the YouTube thing because I don't wanna do it. Juan, Juan's the guy left in his basement alone late at night trying to edit this stuff and put out good content and uh, it's, it's totally worth it, so subscribe. Uh, Flight Chops, uh, Aviation 101, some of these other channels, and a Blanco Lirio channel. These guys are the ones out here doing it and they're actually making a difference out here. It's some excellent content, man. I mean, totally excellent. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. See you here. Oh, that's crazy. He was all that in. Hey, hey.